Hey folks, it's Greg and Janet with Strange RV Tours. Today we're at Grove Hill Memorial Park Cemetery in Dallas, Texas, and we're here to see Jean Hill, also known as the Lady in Red. She was one of the JFK assassination witnesses. We'll tell you more about her. All right, gang, we are at Grove Hill Memorial Park Cemetery, and look at the beautiful grounds here. This is a very large cemetery and has a lot of notable people in it buried here. Now we had a really hard time finding Gene Hill's headstone. <laughs> yeah. Really hard time. Yeah. We, we literally walked this entire section looking for her headstone and somehow missed it. We went over to the office, which is right over there, and they were able to kind of give us an idea where it was, but their maps don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, but look, yeah. Look, look. Now get this, every square is four plots, okay? We yeah. didn't know that when they, when they gave us the directions. Right, so this is Garden of the Cross uh, area, which is that street all the way to that street, over to that street, and over to this street. And we walked the whole thing. Yes, we and, did. And I missed, this is a row I missed. That was my fault. I was looking for the flowers. I saw the headstone. But Norma Jean Hill, infamous witness for the JFK assassination. Yes, her headstone says Jean Hill, February 11th, 1931 to November 7th, 2000. The last dissenting witness, 1122. 63. So that's the book that she uh, co authored. She uh, bio, bio authored. What do you call it? But she was there across the street from the grassy knoll. And we got a lot of stuff to tell you. Jean Hill was friends with Mary Mormon. Now, if you don't know, Mary Mormon took a Polaroid snapshot. I guess it was a Polaroid. She took a picture yeah, Polaroid. of JFK in the limousine at the exact moment that the headshot occurred. That same photo is where later investigators saw Dogman and saw the uh, police officer. Badge Man. Badge Man also uh, behind the grassy knoll, behind the picket fence or stockade. And so anyways, very famous photo. Um, it's probably what started a lot of the conspiracies about the assassination. But this is where she's buried. Yeah, she's uh, Norma Jean Hill, uh, 31 to 2000. Her boyfriend was a Dallas police officer and she did wear red during that day so that he would spot her in the crowd. Well, she's out there with Mary closest to the limo, closest to the limo to anybody else during the fatal shots. That's amazing. But she did write a book, The Last Descending Witness. She does say that there were other shots. She didn't think they came from the, the school book depository. She says she actually coined the phrase grassy knoll she called it the grassy knoll and she said that she actually did go up the grassy knoll to look now i don't know exactly the phrasing but bugs in texas man but mm -hmm. <laughs> um she was there yelling at president President, like Kennedy come look at you know she was waving and trying to get Kennedy's uh, um, attention attention so that Mary could take a picture you know so that's what happened as they were coming down Elm Street she was trying to yell and say Pres Mr. Kennedy or President Kennedy look this way look 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 and that's when Mary was taking 
the Polaroids. And that's when the shots came out. Now she said she heard two shots and then she heard three or four more. So what does that tell you? There's something more than just, you know, one shot to uh, Kennedy. Lone, lone gunman. Yeah, the one shot that hit both guys and the bullet was in good condition. Well, oh, yeah, right. Anyway. All right, let's go on with Mary. Uh, um, Mary was there. She had the famous photo. Um, Jean was there with her. Um, I know Mary wanted to get a photo for her son because her son was in school. And the whole ordeal was astounding. She was, uh, according to Jean, she was kind of in shock. And Mary was saying, get down, get down. And she was just kind of like in shock. And then all this took place. And she said, um, from what I understand, that she ran towards the grassy knoll and she's the one that called it the grassy knoll because she, she saw a shadowy figure behind the fence and a puff of smoke. So, you know, she's right there. She can see the whole thing. Well, not only that, but Mary and Jean were only about 25 to 30 feet away from the car when mm -hmm. President Kennedy right. was struck with a bullet. And Mary said that she didn't even realize the president had been shot until after she took the photo because she saw his hair kind of fly up mm -hmm. and she thought it was a gust of wind. Right. Well, she's looking through the little viewfinder on the, the, the camera. camera. She mentioned that and that's what she saw. But Jean saw the whole thing, the whole thing. And that's why she wrote a book, The Last Descending Witness. And she says, there's got to be something more to this. That's not her words. That's my words. Okay. And what she thinks there's more than one gunman for sure. And that there was a conspiracy for sure. And she did an interview. We saw the, the interview on video that she was with a newscaster before she even got to talk to the FBI. That's really not in sync with what would normally happen in a major crime scene. Why would you be able to talk to media in a, like a studio sit situation? She's sitting in a chair talking to some media guy. And then they're saying like, well, you need to go talk to the FBI now. I'm going like, how does that work? It's breaking the chain of custody. Right. Of evidence. Yeah. As life goes on, she was an elementary teacher for um, troubled kids or uh, low-income kids and stuff like that. You know, she, she until her death in 2000, she taught uh, underprivileged children. And from you know, with the book, I really want to find the book. I really do because it's her accounts. She disputed what the Warren Commission was saying. She tried to get what her side of the story out, and I think it was all pretty much covered up. My, well, opinion, my opinion. In the last few batches of documents that have been released um, on the JFK assassination, we've come to find out that Lee Harvey Oswald was actually given a 1099 form from IRS mm -hmm. from the FBI. Mm -hmm. So we know that he was either working with the FBI or he was an FBI informant. Okay, well, he was definitely, it appears anyway, that he was involved, connected, connected with connected. our government. Everything so. seems to be connected and they tried to cover up all that stuff. You know, and what I don't get is You know, uh, they made a big to-do about killing one man. You know, if it was, I mean, they could have done it anywhere. Why make a big charade about it? They could have done it anywhere. Why make a big parade and make somebody 
take the make a fall guy and all this and all this and I I, I don't know why do you really want somebody gone you didn't have to go to this elaborate scheme but I think they were looking for shock effect maybe because you know if, if President Kennedy had died in his sleep it wouldn't be nearly as shocking as, as what happened mm -hmm. um, but I don't know she she went through a lot of stuff because of the incident everybody involved that was there had to have the ordeal of being with the Warren Commission uh, I know she was on Maury Povich show. She was on Geraldo. She did all these shows trying to debunk the Warren Commission stuff and that her opinion, she was there, okay? Who else to know better than an eyewitness? I know eyewitnesses get confused sometimes with colors and heights and size of people, but when you're actually there and it's that historic, and you're actually watching the event. Your, your eyes are right. positioned right on the president right on from right. 30 feet away. Right. You would think that she probably had the best view of what happened of anybody. Pretty much. But at least uh, she didn't have a, a an accident or a suicide or something like that. They left her alone. But I think because... She, she did voice some of the things. She was under scrutiny a, a lot. Sure. Well. All right, folks. Well, if you want to visit Jean Hill, said we're here at the Grove Hill Memorial Cemetery in Dallas, Texas. The main entrance into the cemetery is right over here you'll come in this entrance and i believe it's going to be the second turn that you'll make to your right you come right up this little road little road right here in front of us and right over to where we're at another easy way to find it is they've got this bridge right over here that goes over to the office and this is where the gravesite is so, norma jean Lolis Hill. So her main maiden name was Lolis. And I don't even know about her boyfriend that was with the PD department, Dallas. He was a patrolman. That's why she was wearing red, so he could see her. I don't know where he was in the motorcade or if he was just a patrolling in the area. She was wearing a long red, bright red dress. Well, yeah, jacket, a rain jacket. Was well, that what it was? It, okay. it was a rain jacket. Okay. Yeah. So, just so that he could spot her. But, you know, um, rest in peace. Thank you for exposing some of the info and helping us out, trying to figure this out. And um, sorry about the turmoil and all the criticizing people and everybody that, you know, did that to you I'm sure you went through a whole lot of crap because of it but thank you for being there all right folks so we hope you enjoyed our visit here to see Jean Hill at her gravesite and if you did please hit the like button the subscribe button hit the little bell up in the corner and until next time have a great day Strange RV tours will take you places With Greg and Janet's smiling faces You might see a crazy flavored soda review Or some tips to fit your RV too So come along, won't you join us, friend As we discover what's around the bend Just sit right back in your easy chair Strange RV Tours is on the air Strange RV Tours is on